Good evening and welcome to Thinking Re-Envisioned. You're just seconds away from the unmatchable Henry G. Noel. Believe me, this is the tune-up your cognition has been waiting on. Here's Henry. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Transitional Radio, where you can mortal up with Brian Brody on All Natural Being Sunday through Thursday from 8 to 8.30, and IPM Nation Sneak Peek Speaks Sundays uh, evenings from 7 to 7.30. And this is our 22nd episode of Thinking re My name is Henry G. Noel, and I am your host. Sorry to say, huh? Right? There we go. Thinking we envisioned. We are here to make you think. We're here to make you question. Question everything. I wish to thank you for joining me this Tuesday evening for Thinking We Envisioned and for making it, well, possible for me to even be here. So I thank you again for that. And we are going to be talking about Canada's decision to decrease oil production, thereby increasing prices. As with Last evening's discussions, do you feel you are being left holding the bag? You know, we are, we're all, we're live broadcasting live this evening from our uplink studio here in Cuenca, Ecuador, two degrees south of the equator. Uh, we are also broadcasting live tonight on ipmnation.com and Thinking Re Envisions Facebook and YouTube pages. So I wish to thank you and all of our listeners from all over the globe. Uh, for listening in li- on live radios, those that are listening in to the rebroadcast, and you all on Fly on the Wall video listeners, thank you so much for being here, and thank you for listening in. I really do appreciate it. I'd also like to thank our good friends at Wirecast for making it possible for us to be broadcasting both live and, well, globally. It's amazing. Uh, to all of our listeners who wish to participate in this show, again, email me at henry at henrygenoel.com. It is my wish to present a show where everyone can be as actively involved as they want. We trust that you've had a good and an enjoyable Tuesday thus far, and I hope that that continues. So let's get into the thread. Let's say hi and see what everybody thinks about tonight's topic. Also want to throw out there a great thank you to my brother uh, for, for putting up with all of this and and you know, literally coming out of retirement to sit here and, and, and push buttons and try to make sure that we all look about as good as we can. Well, hopefully sound as good as we can. Looking, he can't do anything about That's what we're stuck with. But uh, <laughs> hopefully it's all gonna go well. And then on top of all of that, I wanna th- welcome Lee to Transitional Radio. I mean, it's, a, it's wonderful. It's, this has just been fabulous to see this happen. And, and it was just a, an idea. It simply started off as an idea that uh, we could pull together uh, a, a, a station and be able to start plugging in shows that would be you know, very much in the realm of what we wanted to talk about, what we want to discuss. And, uh, and to see this start to happen and come to fruition is just absolutely amazing. And, and again, I cannot thank Matt Connerton enough for putting up with us and, and, and giving us our own section, our own station and uh and allowing us to go ahead and build uh on it and so again my my hats off to, to matt to jenny thank you so much for working with us as hard as you have and uh, and i really do appreciate it so thank you so now we'll jump into the thread and see what's going on with everybody uh, at least hopefully we'll see what's going on with everybody so let me go through and say hi so i'll read thank you so much i'm glad that you got home thank you candace welcome 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 it's great to see you great to see you come on paul mick Thank you so much, Paul, for joining us. I know it's late over there with you. Thank you so much for being here. Maria, always, always, always thank you. Uh, Joseph, thanks again, man. appreciate you being here again. John, always Mr. Dependable John, too. You know, it's really there. Thank you. Candice, hello there. Peace be with you, too, man. I think it's great. And my brother, again, I could not do this without my brother. And uh, I really do appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and, and so, yeah, it's going to be kind of fun. You know, we finally pull in. Uh, some more people. Lee's, Lee has is going to join us, so I'm really looking forward to to all of it and uh, just to see where it goes. I mean, um, you know, with this day and age, you know, here we are, you know, down here in Ecuador. You know, we got Brian up in Columbus, and and here we're getting shows put together and and doing things. You know, and uh, I 
just floors me that 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 is there. The technology is there. We're able to get a, get away with this and do it. And uh, and to me, I'm just excited and thrilled about it. Candace says, "Well, Henry, here uh, here I go. I want the uh, the U.S. to stop selling our oil and making deals. Keep it where it belongs. There you go. Yeah, the problem is oil is a big money maker, and uh, that's that's probably not going to happen. Um, you know, they're going to they're going to do everything they can to sell it. I mean, Ecuador is the same situation." We know living down here, this entire economy is based on oil. Yeah, we are the largest producer of orchids. We're the largest producer of um, of uh, roses that that are shipped all over the world. Uh, and uh, and but oil is the base of this economy. Even the budget of the country is based on oil. So, yeah, it, it's frustrating. It hurts. Uh, I mean, it really does. Mr. Paul Lamb, welcome. Thank you so much for joining in. I really appreciate you. Wow, this is a great surprise. Thank you so much. Um, Janet, thank you. Oh, and there's Janet. Thank you. It's um, great to see you back on the on the list here. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully we'll have get this enjoyed. You know, it, it's really so hard. <laughs> oh, man. Paul, is so good to see you. God, this is great. Hello. Back at you from Tennessee to Tennessee. This is from Ecuador. Love it. And I'm so glad you came down and visited us. Uh, looking forward to your next trip. Believe me. It was great to see you. Um, we, uh, you know, here, here we, we were talking, uh, or the United States has talked to OPEC. You know, OPEC has always been the big, the big uh, guru out there when it comes to oil prices. And of course, we and the, the economies benefit or suffer based on the way oil is, is being produced. And so OPEC and the United States, so all you United States and OPEC, somebody decided, and they, and they agreed to maintain production because OPEC wanted to drop production, drop production to try to raise the price of oil. So they they went ahead and they they listened and they held on to it. Uh, so there's probably something that went through the back door on that one. But they gave up the uh, benefit of making a lot more profit and uh, settled in and just simply kept production high, uh, so that there's a massive surplus, which is what's keep was keeping gasoline down uh, to where where it was. And then we have the G20 in in Argentina. I mean, in uh, Brazil, and all of a sudden, Alberta, Canada is ordered to, or uh, however it works, I guess the Canadian government said, yeah, go ahead, let's, let's start reducing, reducing uh, production, which, of course, they haven't reduced production yet. They just simply announced they were going to reduce production. And, of course, oil prices, the gasoline prices go through the roof. There's not, nothing has, like, there's going to be a shortage. You know, I mean, no one else is backing off production. But Canada did it, and it jumped to 45 cents. That's ludicrous, absolutely ludicrous. But that's it. There's no shortage. There's nothing. They simply make an announcement, and everybody jumps up. They all raise up their prices, and it's acceptable. Wow. It, that's just, it, it's just amazing. It really is. And they get away with it. I mean, that's the whole thing. They just get away with it. So you know this was planned, uh, and you know that it was all set up to, uh, for this to happen. Um, and again, you know, here we are trying to maintain the economy, maintain it, uh, you know, at, at a reasonable growth rate. And as soon as somebody decides, well, you know what, I think we'll just take, take, take advantage of it at this point, And we're going to pocket the money. And I loved how they had advertised it. This is going to help out, of course, the Canadian government. Well, of course it is. It's going to help the oil company and it's going to help consumers. You tell me how it's going to help the consumer when you got to pay 45 cents more for uh, for gas. Or unless maybe they, they feel that by um, by reducing the production, then then that will leave more in the ground. So there'll be more of it for us later on down the road. I'm not sure exactly what they meant by a benefit to 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 consumer. But anyway, in somebody's eyes within the world of the Canadian government, uh, it's going to benefit the consumer. We'll see what happens there. Now, uh, maybe it's going to benefit the Canadian consumer. Maybe the Canadian prices aren't going to go up, but the U.S. prices will. Who knows? But um, I think it's really kind of interesting. And yes, I thank you very much, Janet. Howdy from Texas. I love it. Yep. Good. Good. Out. I love Texas. <laughs> I really do. Uh, Joseph Hagger says, look at France. Yeah. I mean, they're rioting uh, because they the government increased uh, the prices. And, uh, you know, I it's. <laughs> Ah, you know, again, I, I, I get speechless. How's that? Speechless? 
kills the radio listeners, but I can go speechless. <laughs> and it's just what's happening here. So it's, uh, you know, you, yeah, you're right, probably in reserve. You know, we have, there's so much excess oil that was pumped because we just didn't want to, we didn't want to cause any increases to stifle the growth of the U.S. economy. We didn't want to do that. So that's why all of the deals to maintain production. Yes, it's a, you had a loss. You know, you're not making the money that you could because by simply back by curtailing production, you know, because I mean, think about it. There's two things that drive the economy, supply and demand. And that's it. If the demand is high and the supply is low, prices go up. If the supply is, 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 is low and the, if, and the, uh, the, the consumer is, 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 you know, not, not buying it then you know then it balances itself out if the production is high and the consumers are buying it it balances itself out but when you drop production on purpose drop production i don't see how that is justifiable in raising price i mean to me that's your choice you want to you want to drop production then you drop production but if the demand hasn't changed why is the prices going up i mean it's we have the surplus the us is still producing opec is still producing ecuador we're still producing um so I don't understand why it goes up and to go up that much that fast. And as Brian had mentioned, when it gets ready to start coming back down again, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll see a penny a week <laughs> before they give up all of that profit. I mean, they, they love the billions and billions of dollars they make when they do this. Uh, let's see, we have a, a couple more. Yep, Paul says, unfortunately for France, I guess they will get the, the stick in in areas other than oil. Yeah, they, 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 it really is. It's it's really hard. Uh, Wayne says, I no longer believe in supply and demand. It's more like Wall Street playing games. And that's exactly, thank you, bro. It is exactly what it is. Wall Street playing games. And we talked about yesterday, you know, the top, well, one quarter of the top 1% provided two thirds of the money required for the u.s elections last year we talked about that so guess who's being paid back you know i mean I, you they can say what they want to in washington and i know i'm going to step on a few of your toes but bottom line they lie they really do lie and um and it's if they do it all the time and i that's we have got to start understanding that that's what they do this is politics they don't didn't, politics isn't about telling the truth politics is about getting you to believe what they want you to believe. And many, many of us fall into that trap. And that is really where the problem lies. Marcia, welcome. Thank you. Good evening to you. So how do, great to have you on. Thank you so much. Hopefully you're listening. Um, Candace says, uh, when, uh, when, our, when our other president was in office, it was uh, all, um, almost $5 a gallon here. Uh, think about that. And then Joseph says, if they can get the same results um, from green energy, uh, don't get this and don't get the same results. France, largest user of nuclear power in Europe. Exactly. Thank you. That's exactly it. Hi, Lee. How welcome, 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 Lee. Great to see you on the line. Thank you so much. It is terrific. There's so much game playing going on, and and it's you know that is the issue that we deal with is that there is so much going on that. Um, that it stifles the mind as to all of that's going, that's that's happening out there. And and again, my dad used to say, you know, it don't follow the money. Follow the trail and find out who gets to lose the most if whatever is happening doesn't happen. And that's where where you find the culprit. And and there is everything always a culprit behind anything that goes on when it deals with politics when it's dealing. It's always somebody involved in this and somebody's going to make a profit out of it. And, uh, and that's what it's all about. You know, um, it's not about us. It's not about you. If they don't care about you, you don't matter. I mean, we really don't. We don't matter. Um, Candace says, I'm buying another motorcycle. Great gas mileage and, and memories. Absolutely right, Candace. You know, but we have so much. I mean, all of the push, the whole push from the last administration for green energy, you know, solar power uh the money that was invested into solar power companies and 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 um and it was worked out great because they've actually got it down to where solar power is cheaper than 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 fossil fuels 
So they really got the prices of 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 uh, solar converters, solar power panels down, and then came out with with these uh, uh, energy uh, conversions uh, like uh, to electricity from the sun that you just put them. They're clear. You put them on your windows, and and your windows become uh, panels to collect energy, uh, collect solar uh, solar energy. All of that for nothing, because we're right back into we're right back into the oil thing. Uh, so we have the opportunity to do a tremendous amount of clean energy, and we do nothing about it. It's 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 now gone. I mean, they, they tried the the previous administration tried. This one doesn't want that. You know, it's all oil. It's all about oil. So it's very interesting how things really you know go from one side to the other. Um, and I just wish that that we could do that. I wish we could go ahead and convince that the uh, well. It's not convincing anybody. It's the oil companies, if, if the oil companies come out with the solar panels, they'd be up there, believe me. Um, but they will fight it all the way down the line, just like uh, the, the, uh, the, the top donators uh, who own the, well, Sands Hotel for one, uh, but um, the it's a casino, uh, but they also own the, the um, uh, clinic that is a drug abuse clinic. And uh, they will, they provide the drugs, they supply the drugs and they get people off of the, uh, the uh, uh, off of the hard drugs, and they're totally against marijuana. They're fighting it like crazy. Well, sure, because they don't want that out there. Um, and just like the family that runs the opioids, you know, they do not only the brand name, they do the generic, and then they run, they provide the drugs that get people off of the opioids, which I think is absolutely unbelievable. So we, we, um, we're being scammed, guys. I mean, we're being scammed. Uh, and it's really frustrating to see it happen. Uh, Ron says, thought I'd sh uh, shove my nose in and get an education. Hello, Ron. How are you? It's good to have you on. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. Uh, I don't know about the education part, but um, we'll try to make you as confused as possible. Let's put it that way. Um, <laughs> Joseph says, it's subsidies. Yes, of course it is. It, it is. It's, it's all subsidies. Somebody's always making money off of something. You know, take a loss now, we'll compensate you. Uh, Candace says, have you ever watched Rush Hour in China? Nothing but motorcycles. Uh, pretty wild. Uh, never seen so many. You know, Thailand is the same way. Um, it's all motorcycles. Well, because, well, one, there's so many people, you can't drive a car. I mean, the cars are, are they just aren't in the, on the road. And my brother lived in the Philippines for a while, and I'm not sure exactly how the Philippines was. I mean, whether a car was a disadvantage or or motorcycle would have been far more of an advantage, and uh, but I know I've got friends that live in Malaysia. I got friends that live in Thailand, uh, and it is it's all motorcycles or scooters and things like that. Uh, bicycles, lots of bicycles, uh, because that's that's you can't fit anything else down the streets. I mean, it's it's just they're so crowded, uh, especially when you're dealing with a country that's you know got a billion people, a billion people in the area of India. I mean, it's just. It's it's hard, it, and 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 it's hard, and it's really amazing because because so most people in the United States don't even understand what's going on in the rest of the world. So the fact that you even know stuff like that is fabulous, Candace. Thank you so much. Uh, that is really really what it's all about is learning, understanding what's uh, what's what is happening out here. Uh, Candace says, "Have you ever?" Uh, let's see. Yep. And Paul says they can't play the same games if if we go uh, the solar route. Exactly true there would be no shortage in resources. And that's absolutely true between wind, solar, and, and the, the many forms of alternative energy that are out there. Um, yes, absolutely. The oil companies would be at a loss. They don't want that. And so none of that stuff is gonna come up and that's just the way it is. So it's really hard. I mean, it is frustrating to, to watch it keep, keep going like it's going. Candace says, it's pretty crazy to watch no right of ways, they, they swarm. You know, and that is exactly what it is. Uh, you know, here we have a lot of vehicles um, in Cuenca, uh, and vehicles are a very recent thing. I mean, that's within the last ten years here that they've really got the uh, the vehicles have have um, have the cars have come along as they have. But there's many, many, many motorcycles because that is the easiest way to get around here is with a motorcycle because you can. The roads are narrow; they are colonial roads, and so you fit two cars going in opposite directions, but you park a car and that's it. Nobody's going past it. So that's, there's the issue. Uh, Sarah says, can't beat a horse and cart. No, <laughs> there you go. That's true. That is true. 
uh, Wayne, uh, wow, thank you, brother. Uh, Philippines has more public transportation than most would ever imagine. See, and then there you go, public transportation. Now, see, in the U.S., it's we don't know public transportation unless you lived in New York City or San Francisco or Chicago. There is no such thing as, you know, well, a little bit in Los Angeles, uh, but there's no such thing as um, as public transportation. Everybody's got a car and they all get in their car and they all drive in their car. Oh, excuse me. And um, and that is the issue that we deal with. It's um, it's really we it's changing. We have to change our way of thinking because there's so many better ways to do things. I mean, I know we we talked about um, um, or they they've introduced, you know, the diamond lanes where you have more than one person in the car. But I'll tell you, when when I, we were back there uh, from, you know, in this, you know, July, August, September, um, and especially in Texas. The number of people, one person per car uh, is just staggering. Um, and I know, you know, uh, most of the cities are like that. They're just one person per car and out they go. Uh, they don't. It's inconvenient for them to have another rider that they may have to get off the freeway and they have to take them to work and then get back on. Just an inconvenience. And I can't do what I want to do. I got to make sure I pick this person up. Um, it's unbelievable. Just We just don't want to be inconvenienced. You know, it's all about us. It's all about us. Uh, Candace says that in Colorado, uh, many don't drive because of crazy traffic. Public transportation um, is quick. Yeah, it is. I mean, it really is. I mean, down here, it's the same thing. I mean, because so many, because cars are so expensive down here, they, they, the tariffs on them are just horrible. And um, and so, I mean, you'll pay 65% more for a car than you do anywhere else. Um, and it's that's really hard. So people don't have cars and uh, they ride buses and the buses and taxis. And um, and the buses are are 30 cents to, to, to ride on the bus. And, uh, but then they got, you've got to remember that the, the average, average wage here is like $400 a month, a little over $400 a month. So it it's 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 it seems like it's very inexpensive, but when the average person earns just over four hundred dollars a month, uh, you know, all of a sudden a, a thirty cent bus ride or a, a ride that was twenty five cents that goes up to, to goes up a nickel to thirty cents hits people really hard, especially if you have to take three buses both ways. Now all of a sudden you're spending almost a dollar just in travel every day. 30 days or well actually yeah actually it would be two dollars and so you know 30 30 days in the month as an average you're, you're talking money that they don't, just don't have so it's uh it is it is tough but yeah public transportation seems to be the way to go i take the bus constantly reed and i both do and uh, we and, and we love it i think it's fun i mean a lot of times you get stuck standing but that's quite all right you know that's that's what it's all about but yeah we the oil thing is uh, just amazing to see it, how it changes. Uh, Marcia says, you all should come to Ecuador. No traffic problems here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Marcia. I appreciate it. You know what? We're going to have a lot of people moving down here. But you know what? That's good. <laughs> You're going to start an inf a, a flood of people coming into Ecuador, which would be great. I mean, I love it. But, um, but yeah, it is just just absolutely great here. I mean, we do we we do enjoy it. It's a it's a lot of fun. But um, but uh, you know, with what you guys have to deal with now, um, wow. You know, there Candace says I think subways are used a lot in the big cities. The ones that have them, I know New York, Boston, um, I, uh, Philadelphia. The, you know, the, where the the um, the the railroad runs through there. Yeah, they they. You're right. It is. It's and it's extremely useful because you can get everywhere with the with the with the subways london is the same way with the subway get everywhere and and it's so it's much more convenient uh but not very many cities have them and that's one of the big issues uh when you deal outside of uh, los angeles which has i think just a small bit of a of a of a railroad system in in los angeles uh but san francisco has the bart system and then chicago of course has the railway system so yeah, it's just not just not very many cities have put in public transportation, and I think a large part of this is because people just don't use it. They just assume be in their car. It's inconvenient for them to to uh, have to be without their car. I mean, if they just oh, if I have to go shopping, I I can't go because I don't have. A, um, it it takes adjustment. It takes changing of the way we think. Uh, Marcia says, uh, let's see. No, Candace says, I think subways are that. Wayne says, uh, um, 
uh, Marcia, be uh, be careful what. Yeah, Marcia, please be careful what you you want you suggest. You know, be careful what you wish for because boy, it'll happen. Uh, Kansas says traffic is horrible. It yes, it is, especially in the big cities. Uh, perhaps we could use uh, this is from Sarah. Perhaps we could use the Earth's magnetic field for cars. Yeah, it would be a great way. I would love to see them come with. Well, no, maybe I don't. I, I'm afraid to say that because I just uh, I, I don't want to wish that on anybody. But uh, but yeah, you know, we traffic in the large cities and the migration is to the cities now. You know, it used to be it was farms. And the cities were there to handle the crops and get them out to the to the stores. Now it's the migration is to the big cities and it's it's paralyzing Europe, actually, because people are moving out of their cities. The kids are going to this to the to the Paris's and the big cities in order to make money. And uh, because there's just no money there in these small little towns and they're folding up and getting boarded up. Um, we were in uh, Kion, France a, a few years ago and half of the city of Kion was just boarded up. The stores are gone, uh, shop fronts are empty. And it's that it was sad. It's really hard to see, but the whole migration to the city. And well, the hard part with, uh, with cities is, in, especially in the US, cities have about three days worth of food. Three days, that's it. And uh, so if something happened to the transportation systems where you couldn't get the foods, the, you know, get the trucks, into the cities, or you couldn't get the food to the to, to close to the cities. Three days, and you're out of food. Tough way to live. Um, it's things what we really should take it take it. Excuse me, take serious and really look at. Marcia says, "Welcome to, and uh, you're welcome to come and see for yourself. You will be welcomed." Yes, and they are the Ecuadorians are just absolutely remarkable. Uh, Paul says, "Yep, it's crazy." Yes, it is, Paul. It really is. Uh, Candace says, if they want to, to sit in traffic for, for hours each, four hours each, uh, for hours each way to work, I have friends that won't make a double, a double long day. Yeah, well, you know, this is, again, it's mindset, and, and that has to change. Uh, Marie says, it's 2018. Where are all the flying cars? The Jetsons, there we go. Jenny, welcome. I know we're just finishing up and getting ready to close her down, so. Um, thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. It's great to see your icon. Thank you for, for stopping in. And again, I want to extend the thank you to you and to Matt for doing the uh, transitional radio uh, and supporting it as much as you have. And I really appreciate it. Thank you. All righty. I've got a very short period of time here. So I'm going to bid you guys a good evening. Thank you very much. And we will uh, be with you tomorrow and uh, figure out tomorrow sometime what we're going to talk about. And we'll get into that. Okay. So anyway, have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you for the support. I greatly appreciate it. And enjoy. Hasta mañana. Thank you.